Update 9.20 will be released soon and is now in testing. We analyzed your feedback and made changes to the SPG stun mechanics, reviewed the technical characteristics of vehicles from five nations, introduced the Chinese tank destroyer branch, and implemented Grand Battles, a new battle type in the random battle mode. Here are the details on all the new features in this review of the 9.20 common test. So, Grand Battles. What is a Grand Battle and how do you enter one? A Grand Battle is a new battle type in the random battle mode, just like Assault and Encounter Battle. The rules are as follows. Two teams, 30 players each, Tier 10 vehicles only, a limit of four SPGs per team. All battles will be currently held on one map, Nebelberg. The size of the new map is 1400 by 1400 meters. We are planning to add more maps later. The duration of a battle is 15 minutes. Victory conditions are standard. Capture the base or destroy all enemy vehicles. You can complete personal missions as well as receive awards and marks of excellence in this battle type. The process for entering a grand battle is the same as for entering an encounter battle or assault. The corresponding box should be checked in the menu. When you click battle, there is a certain chance that you will enter this battle type. What is the purpose of 30 versus 30 battles? It will reduce the number of Tier 10 vehicles in the Random Battles Matchmaker queue. What are the benefits for players? Massive battles, unique content for players with top-tier vehicles, a new way to earn bonds. The amount of bonds will depend on the experience earned in a battle. In addition, you will be able to earn bonds in standard battles. The only requirement is decent performance in a battle where all vehicles are Tier 10. The bond acquisition mechanics are currently in testing and may change before the release date. Let's discuss vehicle changes. We adjusted the technical characteristics of German, French, US, USSR, and Japanese vehicles. Let's start with the latter. OI Experimental. The 105mm gun was removed as it was too effective for Tier 5. The vehicle became slower, but we increased the thickness of its frontal armor. Therefore, it will be easier to block damage and fulfill the role of a breakthrough tank. The OI lost some weight. The hull armor of this Tier 6 vehicle became thinner, and now low-tier vehicles stand a chance against this Japanese tank. Before, they couldn't penetrate it even when attacking from the rear. From now on, they can rely on maneuvering. The Tier 8 OHO received new premium shells for the top gun with an average penetration of 253 millimeters. Now it can be useful even without HE shells. Turret and hull traverse speed of Tier 9 and 10 vehicles was reduced. Their frontal armor was also reviewed. Now it has some weak spots, 250 to 260 millimeters for the Tier 10 vehicle and 230 to 240 millimeter armor for the Tier 9 vehicle. Previously, you could penetrate the frontal armor only with premium shells, and even that wasn't always the case. The German Super Heavy shares the fate of its Japanese peer. Maus. After update 9.17.1 had been released, we carefully watched the vehicle's performance. At first, the increased damage didn't cause much trouble. However, after some time had passed, we realized that we got carried away in our strive to improve the tank. Therefore, we decided to review its rate of fire. We also decreased its hit points. We will be constantly monitoring how the Maus and other vehicles are performing. The remaining German vehicles subject to changes in Update 9.20 will only improve. The Moissian will receive an increase in mobility for its standard chassis. We can't say it will be massive, but it will definitely help the players who research the mouse. The premium Jagdtiga 88 will become more mobile as well. Its characteristics related to dynamics will be similar to those of its researchable peer. Let's talk about SPG changes and new Chinese tank destroyers. We will get back to balance changes a bit later. So, SPGs. The increased burst radius caused some unexpected situations. For example, you thought you were hidden behind cover, but still received damage. The mechanism for stun and damage calculation was tweaked, and this problem is no longer relevant. We implemented additional variables for damage through obstacles. Long story short, 
If your vehicle is completely hidden behind an obstacle that is two or more meters thick, you will not be stunned or damaged. If it is thinner, just consider it as not existing. The vehicle will be stunned and damaged as if in the open. The third case. The obstacle is two and more meters thick, but the vehicle is not hidden completely. In this case, stun and damage will depend upon which part of your vehicle came under fire. From 25 to 100 percent of the stun duration and damage will be applied depending on the affected part of the vehicle. Chinese tank destroyers appeared several months ago on the Chinese server. However, players from other regions wanted to see them in the game as well. We followed that wish and implemented a full-scale branch of nine vehicles. They all feature different gameplay until Tier 7. The T-26G FT and SU-76G FT are perfect for ambushes and firing from the maximum distance possible. WZ-131G FT is a vehicle for fire and run tactics. Top-tier vehicles feature sturdy armor and powerful guns, and they will be more suitable for close combat. Let's get back to the new characteristics of old vehicles. As for French vehicles, you won't be disappointed. French tank destroyers have been in the game for a while, and we feel that they don't correspond to the current situation in random battles. That is why Tier 8 and 9 vehicles received a new 120mm gun with a magazine loading system. Consequently, three top-tier French tank destroyers will have it. Tier 10 will see some interesting changes as well. The Foch 155 will disappear from the tech tree and become a special vehicle. The AMX-50 Fosh B will take its place. That is where things get interesting. Those players who have the old Tier 10 tank destroyer will automatically get the new one for free and keep the Fosh 155. In addition, hull armor of the top-tier French tank destroyers will be improved, which will allow them to reflect enemy shells more often. The AMX-30 and AMX-30B medium tanks were very similar to the German Leopard, snipers that fire from the longest possible distance. The test saw a change for their characteristics. They will now act as mid-range fire support vehicles. The guns lost some accuracy and penetration rate, but received the highest DPM among all the medium tanks. In addition, gun stabilization and turret armor were improved. The latter still doesn't render enemy attempts to score a hit useless, but it will be more comfortable and safe to play at a medium range using terrain irregularities to your advantage. Bat Chatillon 25T. The tank with the updated characteristics has already been tested during the super test stage, but players' feedback resulted in a decision to keep it as it is. Not exactly as it is, though, because it will receive a beautiful new HD model. the U.S. branch. Good news for patents. The weak turret made it hard to use terrain irregularities. We decided to change this. The new turret will feature thicker armor, and the commander's cupola will be smaller. So, USSR vehicles. The IS-7 will finally get an improvement. The T-54 will get its sturdy turret back. A bit of sad news for the ISU-152 fans. The vehicle will no longer feature the BL-10 gun. This gun got a bit outdated for Tier 8 and was perceived as an old monster from the age when balance, vehicles, and random battles were different. Instead of the BL-10, the ISU-152 will receive the 152mm D4S gun that has the same characteristics apart from the penetration rate. The penetration rate of the D4S is 260mm. In addition, the vehicle lost some interim guns, which should simplify the player's path to the top tier, and received a 190 HP durability increase. We believe it will improve the tank destroyer's survivability. As for the fate of the BL-10, this legendary gun will remain for the Object 704. The vehicle will receive the D4S as well. Another USSR tank destroyer, the Object 268, received an increase for its standard shell velocity. The gun traverse limits have also been increased from 6 to 11 degrees, which makes it almost double. Both changes make long-range firing more comfortable and will facilitate hitting vehicles in motion. Changes in the USSR medium tanks start from Tier 8. The T-44 has finally received an improvement for its gun characteristics. The LB-1 has better stabilization and aiming time now. 
The D2544 features the increased rate of fire and a slight upgrade for other aiming parameters. Frontal turret armor of the top T44 turret has also been improved. The effective armor of the gun mantle was increased from 140 to about 200 millimeters, and the turret cheeks are now over 300 millimeters thick. The T54 Mod 1 and T44-100R turrets will enjoy the same parameters. The T-54 saw a significant turret armor increase, as well as the review of its top guns. The vehicle's role in a battle will now depend on the mounted gun. The D-10T2S is rebalanced for close combat with a decreased reload time and increased DPM. At the same time, its accuracy became a bit lower. The gun stipulates the aggressive mid- and close-range gameplay and the support role. The D-54 received the improved aiming time and accuracy, but reloading time is now a bit longer. It will motivate players to fulfill the role of long-range fire support. The Object 140 turret saw a minor change. Its armor is improved to match the T-62 level. Now, the IS-7 changes. One of the most renowned tanks started to lose its former might against the characteristics of the new top vehicles. That is why the veteran received improved durability, specific power, and aiming parameters. These changes are supposed to bring the IS-7 in line with the current game environment and highlight its role as a close combat fighter. The durability upgrade combined with sturdy frontal armor will allow the vehicle to survive in close combat for a longer time and reveal its full attacking potential. The improved aiming parameters will make firing easier and more comfortable. An increase in mobility will see the IS-7 taking key positions on the front line more quickly. You can get all the details related to vehicle changes in a special Developer Diaries episode. That's it for now. Join the common test, check out the changes, and leave your feedback. It is very important for us. Good luck in battles.